Hi, I'm Willie, and in today's video, we are going to look at the Alta Labs Route 10 router. A lot of you out there have seen this, and so thank you to Alta Labs for sending this out. What I like about a lot of these uh, smaller devices from Alta is they all use the same mounting bracket on the back. They may not be the same depth, but they all use the same mounting bracket. So back to the Route 10. We'll look at the price of this, and we're going to look at the features. But just looking at this, over here, whoop, focus, there we go. So over here, we have the Alta Labs logo, we have a reset button, we have four 2.5 gig Ethernet ports with two of them being PoE, and then over here we have, over here on the right, when it decides to cooperate, we have two 10 gig SFP plus cages. We've got the logo on the top, got the lock on the back, and then we have the, the power cord. So I will tell you one thing about these Alta Labs devices is that they are, they are super, super fast. And I'm gonna show you how fast they are here in just a second. But let's hop over to the Route 10 page over at Alta, and thank you to Alta for sending this out to me. So you get four 2.5 gig ports, you get two hardware, hardware accelerated 10 gig SFP ports, it's got a quad core Qualcomm network accelerator, of course PoE, you can set it up with Bluetooth, the WAN port um, su supports static IP, DHCP, and PPPoE, you get Ike V2, or Ike V2, however you want to pronounce that, for remote access, the WAN, you can do VLAN and QoS tagging. It does support multiple VLANs and subnet support. MDNS, you can do some firewall configuration. You can do some NAT, source and destination, and port forwarding. And it supports universal plug and play. I'll leave a link to this so you can dig into all the nitty gritty that you want. Now, this may not be as fully featured as some of the other manufacturers that, that we feature here. But this thing is fast and it has the hardware for Alta to be able to continue to build on top of this. And I'm really hoping that that's what they do. So real quick, if you're wondering about the MSRP on this, I'll leave a shameless Amazon affiliate link down below. You can pick this up for $199 USD. And it looks like you can get uh, free, free shipping. So not a bad price for a router that has two 10 gig ports and four 2.5 gig ports and PoE. So you can plug an access point directly into this. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can adopt this to either the on-prem controller that they have, which I have one of those right here. So you can adopt it to the on-prem controller you can adopt it to the on-prem software controller if you're running that, or you can adopt it to the free cloud controller. Uh, for ease in this video, just to look at the router, we're gonna adopt this to the cloud controller. If you wanna see a full Alta stack set up with the on-prem controller and the switch and an access point, let me know. I'm probably gonna do a full stack, but uh, depends on, I mean, you know what, let's just, we've got a lot of gear that we're gonna cover this year still, so we'll just do We'll do it on-prem, and then you can adopt it to the cloud. So get a look at this piece of hardware again. And then what we're going to do is we are going to watch how fast this adopts. So the nice thing about the cloud controller here is whatever network you're on, if you plug this router into it and you're logged in, it's going to kind of figure out that this device is, is in where you're at and you're trying to adopt it, and it's just gonna show up. So I'm gonna plug the WAN port in, which by default, your Ethernet WAN port is this uh, WAN port all the way to the left. We might call that Ethernet one or zero, depending on who you're talking to. I'm gonna call it one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the power in. And right now I've got two little red lights on the front, the Alta, logo is pulsing between uh, purple and white here in just a second we should get some ethernet activity you can i don't know if you can see that or not we've got ethernet activity 
this should take literally less than a minute. So we're looking at my Alta Labs controller here, the the one that they host, and any second, boom, there it is. It took less than 60 seconds for this to show up for adoption. Now, when you first pull up your Route 10, if you need a software upgrade next to the version, there's going to be a little icon to tell you to do that. We're going to go ahead and set this up and adopt it into the controller. You can see it disconnected. Now it connected. And now we can see real-time transfer stats. So the next thing I'm going to do is change this to lab route 10. And all I did was click where it said no name, typed it in, and hit enter. And now it's saved. So if I click on the router, now I get this nifty control panel, and I can expand that a little bit. I don't think I can expand it any further than that. But here we get an overview of our ports. So we are plugged into uh, really WAN 1, and then you have LAN 1, 2, 3. Your first SFP Plus port is LAN 4, and then WAN 2 by default is your SFP Plus number 2, but you can change that. So it has a legend here to tell you that those U, the U's on those ports mean that VLAN 1, which is what we're on now, is untagged. If we had another VLAN, it would be... Uh, could be tagged, could be untagged that way. And um, earlier, I had already went ahead and set up a guest network. So let's select that. And by default, it tagged it on all of the ports. But if we edit the VLAN, we can see what kind of information we're dealing with here. So I called it guest. I gave it 192.168.2.1 for the router. We're not going to hand out the first IPs. And then we're going to hand out 243 IPs. Default lease time is one day. DNS servers are automatic. We can hand out that domain name internally. It does support IP, IP version 6, IGMP snooping, MDNS repeating, and you can see that I have this selected as isolation so that that guest network can't talk to any of the other networks. So what else do we have here on our lab route 10? So if we click the advanced button, we can turn on IGMP snooping. Jumbo frames, which by the way are enabled by default on all Alta Lab switches. Hardware acceleration is enabled, or I've got this reboot right here. So we're on VLAN 2. So if I wanted to make the default untagged VLAN and the PVID of LAN 1 VLAN 2, I would um, click this up here. And now I've got this window over here. I can name the port. I can do, I can actually change the mode. That could be a WAN or a standard port. Native VLAN. Um, I can drop this down to two. Hit save. And now you can see uh, that the VLAN 2 here went to untagged. Now if I hit this and go back to default and save, now you'll see it's tagged. So when you're going to uplink this to a switch, you're going to want all of your VLANs outside of VLAN 1 tagged. So you're sending all of those to the switch, and then you can disseminate them throughout the switch however you like. Here we can talk about what VLANs we want to al allow to traverse the port. And then we have PoE options here. That is a, uh, yes, that is a PoE port, so I can turn it on or off, leave it default. I can play with the speed of the port. You should probably leave a lot of this default. I can set a download and upload speed limit. And then we have this energy efficient ethernet, which is by default disabled. That's a little bit of the overview of the ports. Let's see what happens if we click one of those 10 gig ports. So we get the same options here, except then we get one gig, 2.55, 10 gig and auto for the speed on those. I don't recommend tinkering with that stuff unless you know what you're doing or technical support has told you to do that. All right, what else do we have on here? So looks like we've got a radius server set up. We don't have one configured just yet. And you can come down here and you can change the ports. By default, it's going to be 1812, 1813. Here's your shared secret. We don't have any users. Here under VPN, 
We've got an IPsec server that we can set up. So if we open this, we can come in here, configure IPsec. We can set up a WireGuard server right here. And then it looks like we have a, uh, let's see, connect to this server. So here is the client slash site to site setup screen. And you can change that from WireGuard to IPsec. Uh, yes, we want to close that. So this is kind of where we're at with this portion of the router. So if we go into settings, that's where some of your other configuration options are going to be hiding for the router. Uh, not under time zone, but if we come over here to firewall, you can see right here, there's a lot of default rules already set up. Unless you know what you're doing or you're instructed by support, I wouldn't mess with these, but we can add a rule right here and we can name the rule. We can match IPv4, IPv6, or any. You specify your source, your destination, what protocol it is. I don't know if I can, can I select uh, TCP and UDP? Ah, I can select, looks like I can select multiple protocols on the rule there, that's kind of nice. Then this is your zone. Zone in and zone out, so is the zone in a LAN port and the zone out WAN. Uh, which interface is it coming in? Which interface is it going out? And are you going to limit how many packets a second can go through there? So pretty pretty basic rule, but you can get creative with firewall rules. Here there is a, a port forward or NAT here. And when we click that, here is that same um, screen but here instead of being a dnat an snat or a masquerade rule it has the port forward did that have that on the other screen now you've got me wondering it did not right so when i flipped over to the port forward and i clicked add it did make the type port forward so what i wonder is depending on how you created your rule here would it change the type it might but we've got a couple of rules here doing nothing, so we're going to delete those. But if you so wish to do DNAT, SourceNAT, or Masquerade, you can absolutely do all of those with this system. I'm going to delete that rule again. Here is the intrusion detection, intrusion prevention. And it, we don't have a lot of details to this yet. I'm sure that there's documentation on their website that talks about this, but as far as the UI goes, um, we get, is it enabled? Is there a notification and what's the block level? Now, the one thing that I do like about this is that we can make it, you don't have to monitor all VLANs, you know? So let's just say that you've got a VLAN set up and you've got it segregated and it's for your, Chinese made um, vacuum sweepers, right? And you know that IDS IDS is going to block a lot of that stuff or has the potential to. You could create that VLAN specifically for, you know, your, your vacuum sweepers. And then you could turn off IDS IPS on that VLAN if you wanted to. So we've got those options. And then under networks, shows us the networks that we've got here in our WANs. And that's really about as far as I've been able to get into this in the interface. So if I miss something in this overview, oh, there's also a map. That's, that's, that took the longest to load the map uh, out of everything. So if I'm missing something about this device and about the configuration, let me know. I think for the ecosystem that Alta Labs has created, this device is a natural fit. It's got a lot of horsepower. It's got a lot of potential. I think they haven't publicly released a roadmap, but I would like to see them at least 
give us an idea of what features are going to be coming to this router. I'd like to see some more granularity in the configuration of the device. That's one thing I would really like to see. And I would like to probably see some other, I mean, this thing's got enough horsepower. Could we get some sort of a paid subscription for an advanced security service or whatever? There's a lot of potential here with this, with this hardware. If I missed anything, let me know down in the comments. And if you are using Alta Labs or you're going to try it out, let me know in the comments down below. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, if you need someone to take a look at your network, no matter who the manufacturer is, if you need somebody to look at your voice over IP or help you build a new voice over IP system, if you need help wrangling security or even storage, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Come on over to community.willyhow.com and let's talk about Alta devices. So I am adding them into the rotation here for the year. But come on over to the community and talk to them or leave your comments down below. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.